Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast Live. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So as you can see, for right now, it's just me. My man G is not here. Um, he's not going to be with us today, has some stuff to take care of, but we're going to have another special surprise guest coming up shortly. So looking forward to that. But let's go ahead and uh, do some of our uh, intro stuff, get some of the particulars out of the way, and then we'll go from there. All right. So as you can see from the thumbnail, I think we got some pretty uh, interesting topics for you today. You got some good stuff going. Um, we're going to talk some boxing because it seems to kind of uh, be remaining in, in the front of uh, the, the sports uh, landscape right now. And of course, the biggest story, we're going to talk Bronny James and uh, him now uh, being uh, a member of the NBA, him uh, joining his father, LeBron James Sr., on the Los Angeles Lakers. That's a huge topic. Got a lot of different tentacles to it. So we're going to get to that. Um, of course, we're going to hit some uh, NFL topics. We're going to talk about Tua Tonga Valoa and the fact that he's another quarterback still out there waiting for a new deal. And then we're going to finish it up with what I want to call uh, quick hits. So that's going to be some topics I'm going to just uh, touch on that I didn't want to get into a full segment about them. Really didn't think they were that pertinent, but I did think they were interesting. So wanted to make sure I uh, I touched on those. So um, yeah, let's get going. But before we get to that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up if you're enjoying the content make sure you give us that like that five star review and drop a comment all that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm helps us find more sports fans helps more sports fans find us and finally make sure you write it down put it in your phone set an alarm do whatever you got to do to remember saturday nights at 7 p.m we are live here on the format podcast and we'll give you the opportunity to call in talk to us get at me i love it i can't wait let's do it man um so as you can see from the rundown uh, like I talked about there, we're going to talk about some boxing first. Um, I, I love boxing and it's funny uh, when I was growing up and <laughs> that was some time ago, right in the, in the eighties and nineties, like boxing was still really, really big, right? I was born in 78. So the end of the seventies, but at that time, boxing was really, really big. You still had, well, at that time, Muhammad Ali, the greatest, he was on his last legs, but you know, you had Sugar Ray Leonard, who was the next big American star and uh, obviously, um, he would go through the eighties with the four Kings, obviously, uh, Roberto Duran, man with the hands of stone, uh, Tommy Hitman Hearns, of course, uh, what's my man name? Uh, marvelous Marvin Hagler up in the heavyweights. You had iron Mike Tyson who would make his explosion. And I think win his first championship, youngest champion ever, uh, youngest heavyweight champion ever at what, uh, age 19, I believe 19 or 20 in 1986. So, um, really good decade and boxing was still huge. People still loved it, but then you saw as we um, came more and more to the current day, you have issues where boxers aren't fighting each other. Promoters are getting in the way. Boxers are saying, I don't want to do that. They're thinking about their quote unquote brand more than they're thinking about making the great fights, not only for themselves and their and their legends, but uh, themselves, their legends and the sports, of course, uh, the sport itself of boxing. And that that really is bothersome to me when you got guys thinking about all the other stuff, because, again, I came up in an era in all sports, not just boxing, but I came up in an era when if you take care of your business and you master your craft, and I'm sure you've heard this say, heard me say this before, if you're not new to the channel, if you mastered your craft, then everything else would come along with it, right? So it's really weird. Back then it was like, if you dominate whatever your endeavor is and you master your craft, then all the branding opportunities will come to you. But it's like now, I guess because of the advent of social media and all those different things, um, you see all these uh, different companies and uh, the um, endorsement opportunities and everything. They want to see what type of branding you've built for yourself first before they put the money into you. And I guess to some extent, I understand that. But what's happening is you're seeing guys that are more concerned with building a brand than they are with uh mastering their craft and to me that's problematic now some guys are capable of doing both at the same time but then you see other guys who are focusing more on the latter and that building the brand and so 
Um, again, my mentality is always going to be if you master your craft, everything else is going to come along with it. But, you know, many people don't see that. And so be it. So anyway, um, boxing, boxing is kind of to me, I think it's starting to make a comeback. You have really uh, talented fighters. You have tremendously big fights that are possible to be made. And we see it that when the big fights are made, you still see a situation where um, the the, the desire for those fights is there. It's clamoring for it. The fans are clamoring for it. And not just the true boxing fans, but also the casual boxing fans. Because when the when the right fights are made, we see the sales in pay-per-view. We see the money and we see all of that. So um, I'm just like, man, make the fights, stop with the BS, and let's get to it. And you, again, you see when those things happen, then the interest is there and the interest is live. Okay, so um, I've talked about this a few times before, and obviously it's the... Uh, Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia fight. I guess that's about two months ago now. And that was a huge fight. And Devin, Devin Haney came into the fight undefeated. Um, he had never lost. Obviously, when you're undefeated, you never lost. Um, he was a champion, I think, in two divisions. He'd been fighting. Uh, he never fought really too much in amateurs. He fought professionally since the age of 15. He never really signed with a major promoter. Him and his dad have kind of been doing their thing. And they have um, really uh, etched out a very good career if not a great career so far so Devin Haney came into the fight he was undefeated Ryan Garcia only had one loss and that loss was to Tank Davis who now is really becoming the face of boxing which is crazy that a lightweight would be the face of boxing but so be it um Tank Davis we know is just incredibly skilled and incredibly powerful and what boxing fans love the knockout right they love knockout artists so uh respect due to Tank Davis but yeah Ryan Garcia comes into the fight first the first issue is that he didn't make weight. So I think he had to pay Devin Haney $1.5 million for not making weight. It was like, uh, what was it? $500,000 a pound. So you have that. Okay. He doesn't make weight. I think that Ryan Garcia just, he probably didn't feel like draining down to that last, those last three pounds to be able to make weight. So as not to, so he's like, you know what? I'm going to make enough money from this fight. I'm going to just go ahead and where I am is where I am. And I'm going to go ahead and pay him. Uh, so be it, whatever. So, uh, Ryan Garcia, he comes into the fight and he pretty much, he pretty much dominates it, um, for, for most of the way. And it was, I really didn't expect this, right? Because Devin Haney is a guy that always seems to find a way, even in the tougher fights, he just always finds a way to, uh, scrap his way through and come out with a win. And so you, you gotta love fighters like that. The guys who can do that, but for the first time in his professional career, Devin Haney was knocked down. I think he was knocked down three times in this fight. And he was beaten, what's the expression? Pillar to post by Ryan Garcia. Now, I'm not going to act like he didn't. He he showed what I love to see, in, especially in combat sports, right? He showed what I call the warrior spirit. And a lot of guys, you know, a lot of guys don't have that, which is odd because you're fighting a warrior sport. How come you wouldn't have the warrior spirit? But, hey, that that's just me. So um, I, I just... We, we watched the fight. Ryan Garcia, he clearly got the better of him. He ends up winning the fight. Now, it's not quite the same because he didn't make weight, so he couldn't take the straps. But then we find out after the fight, what do we find out? Here's the problem. <sighs> Ryan Garcia popped for two performance-enhancing drugs, which is crazy. Now, he's adamant that he didn't cheat. And, of course, Devin Haney and his dad are adamant that Ryan Garcia knew what he was doing, and he was basically trying to juice, and he was trying to cheat. And I'm like... I don't even know. Um, I don't even know which side to be on. Now you'll you'll hear in the clip later from Ryan Garcia that there's like a billionth of a nanogram or something like that. Like uh, whatever whatever the um, measurement was, it was really really tiny. Now it was enough to be a violation, but it was also a really really tiny measurement. So um, they've been going back and forth over this, and as a result, um, the B sample got tested with Ryan Garcia, and it sucked because he ends up now. Um, basically everything that he had done improving himself as being an elite fighter by beating an another undefeated elite fighter by uh, giving him a, a one sided beat down by knocking him down for the first time in his career and doing all these things. Now everything comes into question, right? Because you're in a position where if you're Ryan Garcia, now it's OK, you couldn't make weight. So you deliberately came in bigger, which I don't I don't really buy the whole make weight thing because. Devin Haney, he's a guy who bulks up considerably when he rehydrates as well. So 
uh, I'll, I'll leave that to the side, but whatever. So we, first, but a lot of people, you know, uh, boxing aficion, aficionados and boxing purists and such have issue with Ryan Garcia not making weight. One, they see it as a lack of discipline. Two, um, sometimes they see it as he deliberately came in big to try and, you know, lean on Devin Haney, et cetera, et cetera, take advantage of size against a smaller man. Fine, whatever. Then we got the big one, of course, the uh, the PED he popped for the for basically for juicing, right? And so Brian Garcia ends up after the B sample gets tested, he ends up with a one year suspension from the New York State uh, Athletic Commission, and that's tough. He also has to forfeit his one point one million dollar purse. He has to forfeit that the Golden Boy, and he has to pay a ten thousand dollar fine to the New York Boxing Commission. So, um. You've been hearing Zab Judah and, and uh, not Zab Judah, I'm sorry. You've been hearing Devin Haney and his dad, Bill Haney, complaining about that since it happened. Now you're hearing Zab Judah, uh, Zab Judah, I'm sorry. Now we're hearing uh, Devin Haney saying he's going to sue and all of this stuff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I get it. The dude popped, he's dirty. And of course you are undefeated and nobody can take back the memory. Like, okay, the fight goes to a no contest now. So that loss comes off your record. So you still have a no contest, but nobody can you can't take it out of people's memory the way you got beaten down in that fight right the way you i'm not gonna say got exposed because i still believe that uh he's an elite fighter but um the way the way you got beaten down in that fight you can't take it out of anybody's memory and i think i think that's really tough so um you have to deal with that if you're Devin haney so he and his dad have been doing a lot of complaining and dare i say whining uh about the situation uh, post that fight. But again, Ryan Garcia, the decision has been rendered and um, he's got to pay the money and he's suspended for a year. So this is where it gets interesting. Uh, by the way, if you're watching on Instagram, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, wherever you're watching, please make sure you go over to the Facebook page. Uh, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to the channel. All that helps us greatly. Really, really appreciate that. Uh, helps the channel grow, helps us get more stuff out there to uh two people so that they can see the work that we're doing here all right so anyway now this is where it gets interesting so i think last week zab judah for whatever reason uh former uh, uh lightweight and welterweight great uh zab judah former champion he hosted a um what he hosted a uh what do you call this an instagram live i believe it was and he had ryan garcia and bill haney devin haney's dad and his manager and trainer um he had them on there and well that was interesting. So I got let me uh, let me play a clip for you from that, because I, I thought it was very interesting. And I was like, huh, this, th these are. Hmm. <laughs> so anyway, uh, here here's um here's the first clip from uh, Devin Haney, uh, Bill Haney and Ryan Garcia. Oscar Valdez got popped. And guess what? He got zero suspension. Shane Mosley got popped. Zero suspension. Canelo gets popped six months. I get popped a year. You so know why? You know why? It's just different. But the, but the, but the different commission, rules. The commission. I had a billion grand. The commission looked up. Your, the, you know how much a billion gram is, Bill? You could get take a salt, a little salt, no. put it in, in, in an Olympic sized swimming pool, and that's what I had in my system. Hey, listen, if you have a pinch of heroin, is it heroin? <laughs> so you heard um, the clip got cut off there at the end, but. Uh, it was you, you heard Bill Haney say, hey, listen, if you had a pinch of heroin, is it still heroin? But um, I think uh, let's see. Alfred, what's good, man? Thank you for coming in. Appreciate you. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel for an undefeated and beaten like that leaves a lot of questions as your ability. And you can beat Crawford. Um, are you are you asking the question about whether or not uh, Devin Haney could beat Crawford or Ryan Garcia? Is that is that your question? Uh, put that in the chat so I can so I can see and uh, try to answer you. But yeah, um, I think again, I think that the frustration comes from uh, Bill and Devin Haney because, to your point, they, those guys were undefeated and they had they had gotten a lot done. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, so here we got my guy, uh, Big Red from the. Uh, well, we'll let him introduce himself. But here's my uh, here's he's going to join us and he's going to talk with us about uh, about these topics. What's Big up, Red, what's good, man? How you doing? I can't hear anything. Is that me? Uh, might be you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, so Big Red, he's getting he's getting himself set up here. Um, while while that while that happens, I'm, I'm gonna continue on. on my end. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. So where were we? We were discussing, um. 
So the Ryan Garcia thing, I think uh, the, the issue, again, is Bill Haney and Devin. It wasn't even just that they oh, lost. Is that, is that um, the, Devin Haney, he got beat down in that fight. And so he's embarrassed. And so, you know, he's got all that going on. So with the clip we just heard, I think first it was a good point by Ryan Garcia. And this is why I've been saying boxing needs an, some sort of overarching governing body, right? Because – you could have one punishment in New York given by the New York State Athletic Commission. You could have a different one in Texas, a different one in Nevada. I really don't like that. And then, of course, you getting to the actual in-ring product, the fights and all that, you have all these different promoters, so on and so forth. And I think we kind of we need to bring that in a little bit. And that's why I, I really like the idea of the Saudi Boxing League. Uh, if you're a boxing fan, you probably heard about that. Um, Minister of Sport for Saudi Arabia, Turkey al Sheikh, is trying to in a way, clean up the sport by uh, what 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 I rep what I read. What was reported is that he's trying to buy out a lot of the promoters so that he can get most of the fighters under one umbrella. That way, we don't have the issue with guys not fighting each other because promotional issues and so on and so forth. And also, if you have that going on, then in a situation like this, you would have uniform punishment for violations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I will take this moment here to take a break and I'll introduce my man, Big Red. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? I had a little bit of sound issue for a second, but I think I'm good now. Oh, uh, it's all good, man. Hear you loud and clear. Hear you loud and clear. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the people? All right. Well, I'm Big Red and I have a podcast on YouTube called The Last Rewind. Uh, we talk about a lot of things dealing with pop culture, you know, stuff from back in the days, the 70s, 80s, 90s, music music videos, movies, and then we also talk about sports and what's going on in the world today, such as what you're talking about today, man. I've uh, only been doing it for about a year, so, you know, we're kind of kind of new to the game, but, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's been pretty fun so far, you know, uh, having to hear other people's opinions and uh, giving myself, and I also have a partner on there named Tremaine. He does it with me, too. Uh, he gives his point of view on, you know, certain topics that we like to talk about. And it's, it's fun hearing other people's point of views on certain things sometimes. And then there's some people that take it too far. The, the <laughs> fanatics, you know, there's yeah. fans and then there's fanatics and fans is cool that you can just talk to in a barbershop. But the fanatics mm -hmm. that act like they're in love or married to the fan, uh, the superstar. <laughs> in question. Oh, we're going to get um, there. Don't worry about it. We're going to get yeah. there, man. And But that's the thing. Fan is short for fanatic. So like. Sometimes I wonder why fans act like that, but that's exactly what it's short for. So it's it's tough to expect some fans, yeah. especially for uh for as you mentioned, certain stars to to act with a rational mind. But it, it is crazy. But yeah, um back back to the boxing. Um, so what I thought was interesting too, and you didn't hear it in this clip, it was uh later in the clip. Um, all of a sudden we hear Ryan Garcia, he accuses Devin Haney of juicing as well. And what what he said mm. was, um, I don't know if you heard that, uh, Big Red. One of the things he said was he's never seen a guy who um, who weight drains and then bulks back up so easily. But I'm like, that's odd. You know, you're a fighter. You've been around professional fighters. Right. Most fighters do that. Most fighters have to weight drain to, to make it. And then obviously when they rehydrate and they eat or whatever, they will bulk back up. We've seen guys clean bulk up as much as 20 pounds, you know, after the weigh in uh, prior yeah. to the fight the next day. So uh, there's all of that. So, you know, um, it's going to be what it's going to be. I didn't like that. And I hate when people do that because we never heard, uh, we never heard Ryan Garcia complain about Devin Haney and possibly juicing until this came out. And yeah. I think that's so lazy. And I think that's what about ism. even though I like Ryan Garcia, I think he's a tremendous fighter. I think, I think that was terrible. Um, so before we go ahead and play Devin Haney's clip on this, um, I kind of want to get your thoughts on this big red on, on where you are with this whole, Ryan Garcia thing, him popping, and, uh, you know, Devin Haney and Bill Haney's response to it? Well, I mean, from, from what a li little bit I heard about it, I know Ryan Garcia, you know, he finally the test came back and it showed that he was using. Uh, and, and, and um, you know, he was bragging pretty hard after that that last win he had. He was. Um, <clears throat> to me, I don't know. The last few things I've heard from him uh, in the last few weeks, he's kind of clownish to me. Um, as far as the, the popping concern, and, and, and maybe I can connect it to what you were talking about earlier with a governing body for boxing. Um, you know, because boxing just seems to be controlled by several different people. We don't, you know, we, you have like four belts for the heavyweight championship mm -hmm. right now. Right, right. Um, 
the, the on, I'll play devil's advocate a little bit on this. UFC. UFC, I, I'm, if I'm correct, if they're governed by what, the USDA? Is, is that who does their drug testing? Um, USADA, maybe. Yeah, oh, yeah. maybe it's USADA. Yeah, USADA. Yeah, I think that's the mm-hmm. same acronym, I think. They are under one governing body. But the mm-hmm. biggest chief complaint about UFC is their fighters don't get paid well. Right. Uh, compared to to boxing, mm-hmm. and and I will that's one. It, well, that's a huge drawback I would say for like fighters like uh, the dude that just fought uh, the guy from Britain, uh, British guy, um, the heavyweight fight where he got clean knocked out in like a minute. Oh, uh, where, uh, or Conor McGregor. Where okay. guys, yeah, well, guys have to come to UFC and come to boxing to make that big payday, that thirty mm-hmm. million, forty, fifty. Oh, million Francis Ngannou. Okay. Yeah. 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 I wonder is the Saudi people, uh, I, mean, I don't, you know, don't want to sound racist, but the Saudi kings or wherever are going to run the government boxing over there, are they going to be able to pay them, not just the top heavyweight fighters, but the people under them, a good, fair amount like they do throughout boxing at these random um, organizations? Or is mm-hmm. it going to be like UFC for the undercards? Or is it just going to be the heavyweight champions is going to get paid a lot? Is it, is, it, is it going to be equal? Is it going to be fair pay across the board like they think they're going to do or they say they're mm-hmm. going to do? Because, I mean, they they got crazy money over there to pay these boxes. That's what I was about to say. They got the dough, so yeah. I don't see why not. They got the bread. Absolutely. Um, No, that that's a great question. I think that money is not the problem, but, yeah, how they're going to dole it out, that would be the question. And I, I'm not saying that it would be perfect. Obviously, nothing is perfect, and there would be wrinkles to iron out, but – uh, for me, I kind of like um, I kind of like having general guidelines and overarching governing bodies. I'm a proponent of that. Um, it's probably the military in me talking, but I kind of like knowing that, you know, the, the rules are the rules and the setup is the setup. But not if I go over here, I got something totally different that I have to uh, I have to figure out and I have to work with versus over there. So, you know, well, I think. Well, well, here's another thing to think about. When you start offering that type of money, mm-hmm. this, this is why it's happening. This is why Ryan Garcia did what he did. It's the generational payday. Mm-hmm. So people are going to try to curb the rules and they're going to try to use steroids because mm-hmm. they're not going to see that kind of payday ever again. So if the, the Saudis or whatever are going to pay them this type of money, then they're going to do whatever they can, including cheat, to get that type of money. And it, the bigger the fight, the bigger the payday, the bigger the lifestyle change. Are they going to be able to govern that? I mean, we're trying to do it here, but, mm-hmm. you know, we let certain things slide because we want to see that fight. You know, there's a lot of fighters cool. out there that um, would come up to the fight clean and then the other the opponent ends up testing uh, positive after the fight. And it's a lot of times I don't even think they even changed the rules. I mean, they even changed the results after the fight. I know they uh, did for this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the other dude had to fight hard to get him to change the, um, the results of it. But are they going to end up doing that? Is it going to come to a point where the bigger this league becomes, are people going to do everything they can to get that big money purse? So I would, um, I would disagree with that. Okay. On the basis of, so you got Ryan Garcia. Prior to the Devin Haney fight, he already had a huge money fight when he fought Tank. Okay. Ryan Garcia, his social media following is like gigantic. So he's going to be a draw pretty much wherever he fights, right? The best fighters are, for the most part, always going to be a draw. Um, Canelo is going to be a draw. So once you hit a certain level, I don't believe that um, it's going to be like you have to do everything you can because you may never see that again. Because the, the big fighters, they're there mm-hmm. already. And they're going to continue to be that, which is why in in many cases they can demand like uh, ridiculous stipulations, et cetera, in the fights because they know that they are the draw. They are the quote unquote A side, like um, Floyd Mayweather Jr. always used to say he's the A side. So he could demand pretty much whatever he wanted. Um, Yeah. But let's go ahead and uh, let's hear what uh, let's hear what Devin Haney had to say um, about this whole thing. And then uh, we'll we'll go on from there. For the shit that he did, I I want I want to make him pay for the shit that he did in the ring, out the ring. However, when you sign a contract, we he said that 
he's going to do, he's going to, he's going to be clean going into the fight. I'm going to be clean. It ain't going to be nothing in my system. It ain't going to be, it ain't going to be nothing in his, in his system. And he didn't hold up his bargain. He didn't hold up on his side of, of, of that. So he will pay. I'm still a businessman at the end of the day. And people admire me because of, 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 of my, my business sense. And so I respect the fact that Devin Haney is upset about how it went down again undefeated and he got beat from pillar to post in that fight um he he fought like a warrior though so it's not like he yeah. just laid down and got totally annihilated he continued to fight but it was clear that he got dominated and i respect the fact that he's upset about it but like now you're suing like come on the, the fight got ruled in no contest you didn't lose your belts now you're suing like come on man but what i will say is that that rematch is going to be gigantic right but my my next question is when it comes to Devin haney and and his father bill again we know why they're upset, but why are they acting as if they fought this guy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's Ryan Garcia, not not Ivan Drago. Like, why are they 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 acting like they fought some yeah. some super monster machine out here? You know, it's like, come on, it's, let's not let's not go over the top. Like when when Ryan Garcia first popped and the results came out, they were talking about, oh, uh, Bill Haney was like, oh, he tried to kill my baby, and, and oh, he could have taken <laughs> my boy's life, and I I understand. If again, if he came out like that guy we just saw in the clip, I, I get it. But like he pushed it a little bit far. But what I can say, all this is leading up to something amazing. And I think it could be a huge mega money rematch after one year um, with Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. Would you want to see a rematch? What are your thoughts on that? Who do you think comes out on top of that? Is, is how, how long is he is he suspended? For he suspended for a year. New York for State Athletic Commission suspended him for a year. So I would assume that um th there we go again. He's acting like he fought Drago, but I I would assume that he's probably not going to be uh fighting uh anywhere else in the interim. I I kind of think Devin Haney is kind of he. I don't know. If he's really legit trying to sue this guy. He it maybe just talked to set up the next fight because you remember what happened mm -hmm. with uh, I'm trying to think of the other guy from USC when John Jones fought the the guy that was a uh, Olympic wrestler that he fought I think three times but he John Jones tested positive for oh steroids. I know I know he's, I can't remember his name either yeah John yeah. Jones he's popping I mean I wouldn't say that to him but <laughs> yeah but no, right, he's, right. he's popped a few times Not right good. and and you know they had a, a large back and forth that set up. The trilogy, I think it was three times they fought. I believe so. Um, if it wasn't two, it was it was three. The back and forth talk, the trash talk, everybody wanted to see them. Uh, mm -hmm. Those two fight each other. I would even pay to see a fourth time because that's how bitter the robbery was. And I think mm -hmm. maybe, maybe Devin Haney is setting it up for that second fight, you know, because okay. we know it, it's, it's wrestling promos in the background. <laughs> right. They don't really probably hate each other. They're just setting up the next fight. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. love to see the next fight because we got to see this dude get his get back because that's the yeah. same thing as the other guy was saying that fought John Jones. was like, well, fight me when you're clean. Fight me see clean. what's going to happen when you're clean. Mm -hmm. And see, and Ryan, Ryan Garcia has something to prove as well. That's right. That's right. Because he he's adamant that he didn't intentionally juice. And, of course, the amount that was found in his system was really tiny. It was like, I guess, just above the amount that would go ahead and, and tick off and, you know, alert alert the test, but not enough. Uh, what I read was it wasn't enough to make a difference. But again, you know, that's, that's, it just sounds like he was just mad he got caught. Yeah, that he, <laughs> that he was going to do it, but oh, I'm sorry. I didn't put, I put too much in my system. I didn't mean <laughs> to get caught, which tells me to, that's why I was kind of going to go with that old Saudi thing is like, I think people probably cheat all the time with the steroids thing. They just know how much to put in their system to not get caught. And he just messed up. I could be, man. I, I can't speak to it. I really don't know. All I know is uh, uh, he popped and that is a fact. And I'm not going to say whether or not he did it on purpose because I don't have any money to get sued for slander. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just say uh, allegedly you good. Yeah, absolutely. No, well, we know for sure that he that he popped. We have no idea whether or not he uh, intentionally uh, took PEDs. All right, so um, it, before we uh, finish the boxing topic, this is interesting, right? So we know arguably the biggest name in boxing right now, at least the biggest American name, is Tank Davis, right? Yeah. The guy is he is a showstopper. 
He is a knockout artist, but he is also an inc incredibly skilled technician inside the ring. And that's the one thing that really surprised me about him once I once I started watching him. Like his skills, his skill set is amazing. And he's he's a guy that he does that. What what they used to say with Floyd and what they used to say with Andre Ward and now Canelo and whatnot. When they say he downloads his opponent, you see him start slow and it looks mm -hmm. like he's losing the fight, but he's figuring out what the opponent is going to do. And then, boom, he lets the dynamite go and it's good night. Right. So. What is he, uh, 30 and 0 with, I want to say, 28 knockouts, one of the highest yeah. knockout percentages in boxing. My guy, Better BF, has the highest at 20 and 0 with 20 knockouts. Monster. But anyway, um, Tank Davis is that dude. He is that dude. He's the boogeyman of boxing. He is one of, uh, he is one of boxing's uh, brightest stars. And so now the next question is, who's up next? So we're hearing a very good possibility that he fights uh, Lomachenko, which I would freaking love. Lomachenko is another outstanding technician and it would be weird seeing two southpaws fight at a high level. So yeah. um, I've read recently that uh, that tanks team has already started breaking down Lomachenko's film, which is like, I, I guess they really believe that fight's going to happen. And that's crazy that they, they put in that, that technical dedication to um, helping him be as great as he is by they're already breaking down his film. What would your thoughts be on a, a Lomachenko and tank Davis fight? Uh, I think it was going to be the same result as it was the last fight. I do not oh, see. Okay. I, I don't see anybody in the foreseeable wow. future that can beat this guy. He okay. just, it's not just he's just skilled. You know, like Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather was skilled. Yes. This guy is skilled Great. with dynamite in his hand. Yeah. It's, it, he's like, he's what Deontay Wilder should be. Exactly. Yes. Correct. Deontay yeah. Wilder had skill. He might be the greatest heavyweight champion of all time. I'm not going to go that far on the strength of his competition was pretty weak, but that, that's a different story. I'm yeah. I'm not the guy that likes to denigrate that, but competition has to matter. Yeah. And Deontay oh, yeah. Wilder, man, his era was not great. As soon as he ran into a really good fighter, like that was pretty much it. You know, Tyson Fury took, took care of him. But no, I totally get what you're saying in terms of Tank being Deontay Wilder with skill because – He's got the brutal knockout power, one punch KO power, but also he can he can technically break you apart, and yeah. and that is that is impressive. You don't normally see that with with knockout artists. So yeah, that, I totally get it. Um, I would love to see him fight Lomachenko. I I would say that I would give Tank the advantage, and one of the biggest reasons I think Lomachenko is like thirty six already. Those mm -hmm. Eastern Bloc guys, it's tough for them because they don't get to come over here when they're young. So it takes a while before we even see them. Most of the time we see these dudes when they're 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 already, you know, 30 or older. That that's when we first start seeing them. Like I remember I was a huge Triple G fan and and still am to some extent. I guess he's not officially retired, but you know, he's he's done. He's on his way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was a huge Triple G fan and I, I was watching this guy pretty much from his uh from his beginning fight in the States, but he had tons of fights overseas in Germany and stuff like that. Um, before he before he fought over here. And so, and I think he had over 400 amateur fights. And so these guys get old before they can get here. So we don't even get to see them in their true athletic prime. So that's tough. But yeah, um, Lomachenko, man, I don't, he's he's awesome. But, well, I think he got, I think he got robbed against Haney, but that's, that's a different thing. But Oh yeah, I um, think he got robbed too. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. yeah. But I, don't, I don't think he can beat Tank either. If nothing, the youth, man, the youth. And then he doesn't have the southpaw advantage because Tank is a southpaw. So Tank knows what that is and he knows how to deal with that. Although he's not used to fighting them, he knows exactly what they bring to the table. So uh, definitely very interesting. Um, I think we'll get to see that fight, though. I definitely want to see it. But I, I, too. I think it's going to be the same result. I, I think it'll go nine rounds at the most. Okay. Okay. You don't think, you don't think Loma can survive it? Nope. And then um, plus the fact again, you say he's thirty six. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, he, yeah. I don't think his stamina is going to be able to. Uh, he's going to hawk him down. Uh, Davis likes to hawk his opponents down. He stalks does. his opponents, yeah. wears them down, and then when they think a punch is coming from somewhere else, that's when he they, he hits them oh. with a punch they don't see. That's the yeah. that's where how he gets them most of the time. He hits them uh, with a punch they don't see, and that's where the knockout comes. Yeah, yeah. And and the scary thing too is once once Tank realizes you can't hurt him, <laughs> he just he just completely walks you down. Like 
um, like the Frank Martin fight. Frank Martin was a significantly bigger fighter. So I'm thinking, OK, he's going to lean on Tank. Mm -hmm. He should physically bully him, kind of try the same thing that um, that happened to Wilder against uh, geez, what's Fury. Name? Fury, thank you. Um, he should have been leaning all over him. He should have been trying to take his legs, wear him down and, and take him into the deep waters. But he didn't do that. And then once Tank realized, like, oh, this dude got no pop, he just walked right through him and put him to sleep night night. So, um, yeah, that, that was tough. Um, so, yeah, the other thing, uh, I don't know if you watch uh, It Is What It Is with uh, Cameron and Mace. I don't watch it cool. regularly, but I, I check see it more clips than anything. anything. Yeah, yeah, same. And one of the things they were talking about, I guess it was kind of like a dream fight that they would love to see was, and I wanted to bring this up, was uh, obviously Tank, who, who we know is a, a total monster. Here's some of his uh, <laughs> highlights, or if you're his opponent, uh, lowlights, I guess. <laughs> so we were we were just talking about how, look at that, one punch power. That is, that is serious. Um, yeah, we were just talking about that. So um, we know, we know what type of animal tank is. And then they were talking about, and I, I'm going to show you some B-roll in a second of the opponent that they would love to see mm. him. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that's, no. that's not that's not the one you want. <laughs> and that, you know, I think I'm more impressed that the, 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 the tank, the fight the tank knocked dude down or knocked him out with a kidney shot. That oh, was right. Yeah. 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 He caught him with the liver shot. Yup. Look at that. Night night. <laughs> but yeah, so mm. what what they were saying on um uh what's what's the show? It is what it is. The dream yeah. fight they would like to see is tank versus this guy. And I would love to see that as well. Boom! Missile. <laughs> I would love to see Tank against Pac-Man. The only, the only thing would be, damn, hmm. Ricky Hatton was tough too. <laughs> the only thing I suppose would be, like, what would be um, the weight class? Yeah, like, can yeah. Can Manny uh, still get back down to 140? I don't think so. Can Tank get up to 147? I don't think so. Maybe you put a catch weight in there, 144, 144 or something like that, 145. Um, but yeah, you, you, you have to figure out something because hmm. well, I think Manny can still fight. I think he's still a whir whirling dervish and obviously, um, yeah, absolutely. Alfred. Yeah. Tank, tank is mean, man. Um, but yeah, the Manny is, he's still a whirling dervish and, and he can go, um, obviously he's a lot older. So that would be, that would be an issue as well dealing with his age, but the way he fights and funny thing, he's another Southpaw. <laughs> so there's yeah. that. But the thing is, Manny, what he gave people trouble with so often throughout the years is um, the fact that he's a dude that throws punches from odd angles, too. And like mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier with Tank about um, not seeing the punches coming, uh, Manny is a dude that can do that. Um, your thoughts on on what it might look like, it'll probably never happen, but what it could look like if we managed to work out all the kinks and had a, a Manny Pacquiao-Tank Davis fight. I can't see Manny Pacquiao coming down to, to Davis's weight. Uh, I, I, uh, there's probably a catch weight somewhere in the middle. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, Pacquiao. I'm, I'm going to have to ask you this then. Do you think, you know, because there's always been, that's kind of subject we kind of talked we about go. the last couple people. Do you think um, he, he he popped? I don't. Um, I don't. Or anything. I don't. And the reason why is this. It's funny that that was never, ever an issue. Um it, it wasn't really a concern until Floyd Mayweather said it. And then all of a sudden it became gospel because Floyd said it and blah, blah, blah. But um, when Manny said, okay, you know, he'll do it or whatever. And then Floyd is talking about, oh, he's juicing, he's juicing. And then uh, Manny's like, okay, cool. Uh, what did he say? I think Manny said something like, we'll both test. And if anybody pops, like they got to give up a huge chunk of money. And Floyd was yeah. like, no. Floyd said, no. So I'm like, hmm, because I actually read stuff that there's allegations out there that Floyd cheated too, like he had dirty samples and this stuff, but he controls I can believe he it. controls the testing in Nevada, which maybe, and I'm not saying he did or did not, but if that is the case, that would be why he never wanted to go fight anywhere else because he can't control the testing outside of his his uh, fiefdom, right? Let's call it that. So, but yeah, I don't think that Manny ever did it because also. Floyd was real quick to get quiet when Manny threw that cease and desist um, suit on him, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, it, it is it is what it is. Uh, I guess we'll never know. And what frustrates me, too, uh, with that, um, 
old, yes, but very experienced, truly great ring craft. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, but what what frustrates me with the with the Floyd and Manny thing, uh, and I know that's not the topic, but when Floyd beat him, you know, Floyd uh obviously he had the brittle hands and Manny he got, I think he got surgery on a torn rota- rotator yeah. cuff in his shoulder like the day after the fight. Yeah, that's why. So he, yeah, he asked, he asked Floyd, Floyd's team, like, yo, can I get a, I don't know if it was tore it all or what. I'm going to say tore it all because that's, you know, shot that most athletes use when they get shot up. But he asked yeah. Floyd, like, yo, can I get a shot in my shoulder before the fight? Floyd is like, no. Whatever the same thing was, Floyd got it in his hands before the fight. Same thing. That I didn't know. Yeah, so Floyd, Floyd got to take it. But when, so this is this is the thing of Floyd controlling everything. Mm-hmm. Is he an all time great fighter? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do I respect the way he went about the second half is, of his career? Absolutely not. But yeah, to your point, I'm sorry I got long winded there. No, cool. I, I don't I don't believe that um I don't believe that Manny juiced. If he did, he never popped. So that is what that is. But I don't think he did. Okay. The only reason I said that, the only reason I said that, because it's been what? Has it been three years since Manny had a fight last? It's been a while. Okay. He's 45 years old. Is he 45 and, and, already? Jeez. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's been three years. It gets harder to train and get back into ring shape, especially right. if you're dropping weight. Because mm. When you drop weight as an athlete, you're also going to lose some muscle mass, which also you're going to lose some fast twitch muscle too, which is going to be important when you're fighting Davis. And that's why I was like, I'm wondering how far down would he have to go down and weight? That, that's key. Uh, how, how far down he would he have to go, and Great point. how slow would he be? Would he would he be yeah. as fast? I mean, I know his thing is power, but it's also mm-hmm. fast twitch muscle too. Yeah, so I yeah, think that's going to be important, and the layoff as well. Yeah, I don't think it's direct power. I think it's power coming from, to your point, the fast twitch combinations. What's up, Bruce? Glad to see you in here, man. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. To, uh, well, you already subscribed, but make sure you like uh, like the channel. But anyway, um, yeah, I think. Uh, would he would he be able to and that's what made Manny so effective is the punches and bunches right the speed mm-hmm. the coming from odd angles the constant movement and doing all of that so I that is a great point I did not realize he was 45 now I know it's not the same as actually being in the ring but the question would be if he's been sparring all this time how much does that keep you in relative shape it's not the mm-hmm. same as fighting but how much does that keep you in relative shape because I think we know he's got the cardio. I think he, he's a, supposed to be a very good basketball player. He hoops all the time. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if he's still in government over there in the Philippines. I think he played semi pro ball over there. Um, uh, Manny. Have you, have you seen clips of him? <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying. I, you know, I haven't seen clips. I, no, very I good is not the word you would use. For okay, so Manny, it's not very okay. All right. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. But um. But yeah, that would be that would be interesting if he's been continually sparring with at least decent level opposition all this time. That might, to some extent, keep him going. But yeah. that's, that's a great point. He might need the juice. Uh, that's kind of the thing I was kind of getting into. Maybe he might need the juice if he has to go down in weight. He might need it or think, any fight. That's, period. Where, that's where you were going with it. That's funny. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's possible. It's definitely possible. All right, um, what are we going to do right now? We're going to go ahead and wrap up that basketball topic and, I'm um, sorry, that boxing topic because we love to talk boxing here on the Format Podcast, among other things. So um, let's go ahead. If you have anything to say, you want to make any commentary on the, on the boxing, the state of boxing, the fighters we talked about, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, other fights you might want to see going forward, dream fights. Um, go ahead, give us a call, 904-219-8264. 904-219-8264. If you're just coming in, make sure you go over to the YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you like this uh, this show so we can get it out to as many people as possible. But yep, go ahead. Give us a call. Uh, let's get it. <laughs> 